The world emits roughly 3 gigatons of greenhouse gases annually during food transportation from production to consumption sites, according to a new study published in Nature Food. This represents 19% of the total food-related emissions, covering food production, land use change and transportation. The study's estimate is seven times higher than the previous ones. According to David Robinheimer, nutritional ecologist and co-author of the study, earlier studies only considered the direct transport of particular foods, like animal products, leaving out associated products like soya bean to feed the animals. High-income countries are the major contributors. Countries such as the United States, Germany, France and Japan constitute 12.5% of the world's population and yet generate 46% of food transport emissions. Contributions from India, Brazil, Australia and Argentina are tied to exports. Access to improved technology and expanding food trade has helped these nations rapidly scale up food production in recent decades. Still, low-income countries, according to the analysis, cause only 20% of emissions, despite supporting about half of the global population. The researchers also found that transporting vegetables, fruits, cereal, flour, sugar and dairy products has a heavy carbon footprint and surpasses that of animals. Plant products are high with transport emissions because of their bulk and the fact that they require refrigerated transport. Emissions from transporting vegetables and fruits are twice that of producing them. In contrast, transportation emissions from animal products are less, but production generates high emissions in other ways, such as the impact on land and high methane emissions. The three gigatons can be categorized in terms of domestic and international transportation, which includes imports and exports. A majority, which is 1.7 gigatons, is caused by domestic transport emissions, while 1.3 gigatons by international transport emissions. The world could reduce emissions by 0.38 gigatons by replacing imports with locally grown food. According to David Robinheimer, eating locally is ideal, especially in affluent countries. The study recommended that advanced nations invest in clean transport and incentivize food businesses to reduce emissions linked to producing and distributing food commodities. Professor Manfred Lenzen said in a statement, both investors and governments can help by creating environments that foster sustainable food supply. The researchers will explore the impacts of diets in their future studies. This is a very important question given the global environmental crisis and the big impact that food has on the environment.